What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Unhinged Talk. You know the deal. I mean, I'm your host, Patrick Hennessy. We got hashtag shut up, Brandon. Brandon Kramer tonight. How are we doing, Brandon? Doing great. Doing great. Good I'm not, Saturday night. I'm not. Because it's the day after Christmas. Uh, we know this year I asked for DJ LeMayhew for Christmas. We didn't get him yet. But we did get some news, right? We got some agent little sprinkle spices, whatever's going on. Um, apparently the Dodgers now are showing interest in DJ LeMayhew. Who would have thought? Who, Who would have thought? thought? Who would have thought that the Dodgers are looking to improve their team? Bro, it's a shocker. Like no one would have ever assumed every team in Major League Baseball is looking after DJ LeMayhew right now. Um, but I guess I will say, um, maybe we shouldn't take this as lightly as maybe we're thinking. I think the Dodgers could be a possible threat to sign DJ LeMahieu, but I think all every offseason, whenever we hear a team is interested in blank, a team is interested in, interested in blank, it's all smoke and mirrors. Like, it's all agent tactics. It's all, until I hear a team is close to signing a player, I take everything with a grain of salt. So mm-hmm. I think the way we need to look at this DJ LeMahieu saga is, if it is not solved by the end of January, I'm just going to assume that he's going to a different team. It'd be weird. If he's not signed by the end of January, that means one of two things. First of all, if the season starts on time, that's a very late signing. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's going to come down like in, in the dog days of January. I think we're going to start to see, like, I think it's going to get to a point where DJ's like, I want to be, he's probably say, I want to be a Yankee. Let me just take whatever deal they have on the table. Um, you think I, he'll do that, though? I mean, like, do you think this is the same deal as like prior to 2019, where he apparently took a pay cut to come to the Yankees? It's not going to be as as minimal. The Yankees are going to give him money. Um, the Yankees are going to give him money. They're not going to overpay for him. But I agree. It, it there. I think it's going to get um, I think it's going to get done in January. Um, I I mean, here's the thing: if DJ was going after the money, I believe he would have been signed already. No, there have been my new- thing is like. I agree 100%, but that's why I'm looking like in January, and I'm saying if they can come to like some sort of agreement by the end of the month, that just leads me to believe that an agreement's just not going to get done. Oh, I'm totally on board with that, unless there's like no, they're like, okay, the season's getting pushed back, but still, that's weird. I mean, he was signed, as um Ryan said, he was, um or not Ryan, um as George said, he said he was signed in January last year. Yeah. Um, So I think it's just going to let it play out, but I think in January, we're going to start feeling, okay, now it's time to like, Unless they know something about the season that we don't, but I, I'm still confident. I mean, a bunch of the agent reports. That's just that's just his agent trying to get some leverage. Um, I'm not entirely yeah. worried yet, um, but I mean, I, I guess we'll see. I mean, it's it's clear that the Yankees are focused on getting DJ. I mean, they're they're in contact with him. Um, so hopefully, we'll get something in uh, the month of January. But I'm not too worried yet. Yeah, I mean, Ryan kind of has breaking news for us. I I know I didn't hear this, but apparently he heard. Um, that Jeff Passan's going to report tomorrow that they're signing Jalen to play shortstop for the Yankees, um, which is huge, um, huge news. Brandon, did you hear anything about that? I have not, but I'm very excited about that news. Hopefully, yeah, that no. means we can be. Ga- well, wait. Um, since him and Lindor are cousins, you said does that mean that uh, Jalen's going to move um, to? Where would Jalen move if, if he I brings think, Lindor? You know, Jalen is such a team player that he's willing to play anywhere. Like, I think that he would even, like, take over his bench coach, maybe, if they really need him to. But um, going back to DJ LeMahieu, obviously, um, I really do think that at this point, the Yankees still have to be the front runner. Um, I know because we hear a different team entering the mix every week. One week, it's the Blue Jays. Next week, it's the Mets. Next week, it's the Dodgers. It The Yankees are the only team that's like consistently been in the DJ mix, I guess. Um, so I, I'm just so tired of talking about it. Like, that's my thing. It's like, it sucks that every time we come on here, like, we're not talking about like, I mean, we could technically talk about the Yankees signing Nestor Cortez Jr., but I want to like be able to talk about a move. We could talk about Tommy Canley, actually. Yeah, I mean, that's a situation wanna- that, that, kind of interested in me a little bit but you could give your thoughts on it first i don't this this might shock people it was smart for the yankees not to let him go because tommy john this is it's a big ass surgery it's ruined some pitches career especially for a relief pitcher if tommy canely doesn't get his velocity back he's done and that's and the dodgers paid him two years he's not pitching next year like he's not pitching in 2021 because no. he got the surgery in August of 20 of 2020. He's not pitching next year. So you're honestly betting on himself. And if that doesn't work out, then 
I mean, by by 2022, the Yankees could have another, uh, maybe the next Tommy Canely. I mean, I know, but here's my thing. It's like, I wouldn't really care about losing Tommy Canely if we had viable replacements for him. We don't. If we're talking about, like, if we had, if we signed Blake Trinan to take over Tommy Canely's role, I'm so for it. But right now, the only thing the Yankees have done to improve the bullpen, one, they signed Matt Bowman to a minor league deal, and he's in the same boat as Canely. He's not pitching all of next year. And they brought back Adam Warren, and they brought back Nestor <laughs> Cortez Jr. What are we doing? Like, what that, are we doing? That's just some depth signings. Um, like, they, they need that's more not depth. not improving the bullpen at all. No, I think it's just some depth. I mean, what ha- what have the Yankees done so far this offseason that has upgraded this team to put them over the hump of finally getting to the World Series? Nothing. Well, let me ask you this. What have other teams besides the Mets getting James McCann have done? Nothing. The market is moving. Well, they also got Trevor May. Yeah, but besides that, the market is moving extremely slow. I mean, I think it's because teams are scared to spend money, mostly because they don't know what the deal is for next season yet. Yeah, and I think that's going to continue on. I think once we have a, like a fir- uh, like a firm answer of what's going on, then we'll um, th- then we'll figure stuff out. Uh, to Ryan's point, sign Kirby Yates. Kirby Yates was terrible last year. Wasn't he injured? Yeah, but he was terrible. And you honestly, after someone has a year like Former that, Yankee legend though, the last thing you want to see is someone like rebound and be that bad like maybe just like let's say he had like a sub two era maybe him being in the low threes upper twos is easy but when he's dropping like the four or fives like he looked unusable last year and yeah he had some elbow problems but still it was like a total 180 um i i want to talk about this comment really quick because i i agree with the rays part the rays have taken on uh reclamation projects but have the dodgers really done that the Dodgers have just always had a good good farm system. They're, I mean, but my thing, though, is, like, look at the Dodgers, right? They just won the World Series. Their team is still unstoppable. They're not losing, really, anybody. Um, and then they're still in rumors for guys like DJ LeMahieu this offseason. Could you imagine? Like, the Yankees have not made the World Series in the past 10 years. And they, I don't, bro, I don't know. Like, do you I mean, understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, the Dodgers and Yankees are always in the running for these big names. I mean, but besides uh, trading, I know, but and it just seems like the Dodgers ahead. aren't satisfied, but the Yankees well, are. The, if like the Dodgers also haven't made any like big, big signings, like in terms of besides re-signing Mookie Betts, in terms of free agency, they have kind of just built on their farm system and their pitching. I mean, the thing that's honestly hurt them is their lack of their off. The, their bats seem to die in the playoffs but they always have solid pitching with us at the end of the day, it's the bats and then the pitching sometimes like we're just looking for pitching it's both. Yeah. Bro, I mean, I, the Dodgers I, I, have I'm so telling you right now, our lineup, I don't see capable enough of winning a world series. I just don't. And it's not because the talent isn't there. It's just because I think it's too one dimensional. Like it's a great lineup, but like, for example, on stream last week, I was watching the 2009 world series. There's no way in hell. You can compare those two lineups, the 2020 to 2009. Name wise, yes, it can go toe to toe. But you look at the talent and and how versatile each hitter is, and it's just not, there's no comparison. Yeah, and I even mean, even compared to the Dodgers lineup last year, like the Yankees lineup could arguably be better on paper, but when it comes down to it, the Dodgers lineup is just more versatile, and that's what wins you playoff games. And honestly, the thing that propelled the Dodgers is that pitching. I mean, they were bringing out Julio Urias um, yeah. out of the bullpen. I mean, they have that kind of like a, they, they, they got it all. Who Dustin be that guy for the Yankees. Michael. We don't, we don't have enough starting pitchers in like a road. I mean, normally in like a, a world series, you would ideally run with a fight with a three man rotation. So let's say ideally it would be throw it out. Cole Tanaka Severino. Um, that guy would be a Devi Garcia. He would be a guy coming out of the pen. He has the stuff to be able to do that. Or a yeah. guy like Clark Schmidt. Yeah. And Devi Garcia pitched a one inning this postseason for us. Yeah. But also with Urias, Urias has been in the playoffs like a year or two now. So he's had more experience with Sevi or uh, with a uh, Davey and um, Clark. They just need like a, they, this is this, this, we need to have a full season because this is a big year for them. This is the year that Debbie's going to develop in the major leagues and Clark's going to probably start off in triple a and then move up to uh, the major leagues. I agree with Ryan's comment. I mean, I agree partially only because the Yankees have developed players, just not pitchers. We just can't develop pitchers. 
Yeah, it's, we, we, I don't understand but, why. Developing pitches also is like a long kind of project. Um, also, though, what happened to the Yankees' whole mantra of like left-handed sluggers? I mean, Bobby said it right here. We look – the thing that like sticks out in my head the most is take us back to 2015, right? The Yankees were facing uh, Dallas Keuchel in the wild card game, and the, the whole thing was the Yankees' lineup – was way too left-handed heavy. And now it's like, skip to 2020, and now we're way too right-handed heavy. So, I mean, but where's all, the balance? I mean, but with our right-handed hitters, a bunch of them can go the other way. And I think... But I don't, I don't care, though, because they're so one-dimensional. It's not like uh, these are contact... Like, I don't care that DJ LeMahieu's right-handed because he'll bat 370. But I do care that, like, I don't know. Like, Miguel Andujar is right-handed because he sucks. If he's left-handed, he's still on this team. Yeah, I mean, we just need... That's why, honestly, if you don't get DJ LeMahieu, go get Michael Brantley. I mean, he would be... Yeah, but then... But the issue is, like, the Yankees have all these players locked in at certain positions, so where would you even play Brantley? Because you, Stan if, has the DH locked up. You have you, Clinton Gardner, I'm assuming, in left. Hicks and center, well, no, judge it right. I assume... Who knows what happened? I mean, at this point, like you just need a lefty bat. Like I don't want to see anyone say Didi because he's not a quality <laughs> bat. No, yeah, like, we need like a Michael Brantley type left left handed style hitter. That's what the Yankees. That's what they're missing. That's what they've been missing. And honestly, it doesn't even have to. I think that they might have to settle for Tommy Lastella. That is honestly not a bad thing because I, the, yeah, the I think he's like a Walmart play. Brantley. He can play anywhere. I know. But then I think the way the Yankees look at it is I, I don't want to assume things that go on in their scouting meetings and their organizational meetings. But I am going to say that I think that they would look at a guy like Tommy LaSalle and be like, we have a much cheaper option uh, compared to Tommy LaSalle in Tyler Wade. You, no, you I, know that in the organization they think that. I, I doubt it because they, 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 you can look at analytics, but then the analytics can also say Tyler Wade can hit a baseball to save his life. Um, so George says there's a rumor the Yankees could restructure Stanton's contract. I doubt that. Yeah, the, no. if, you, if you really look at it compared to what Harper is getting now, Stanton's it's not that bad. Not that bad. No, it's, it's like it's the really upper twenties, low thirties. That is not bad at all. Uh, so then George, and the says, fact they're getting money from Miami too. They're getting like, what, like thirty million? It was thirty million, so I think that's spread out over a couple of years. That's that helps. Um, I disagree about what George said about. I, know, I, don't I was going to think Lestella and Neil Walker. Neil Walker really, Neil Walker really couldn't hit with Lestella. He can. Lestella uh, was an all star in twenty nineteen. He had a breakout year. I mean, the dude can hit. Um, but um, I mean, to, back to what some people were saying above. Um, that Matt Blake is going to change everything. Here's the thing. Matt Blake can help when it comes to the majors, but at the end of the day, he's not controlling double A and triple A. There is yeah. a gap that is just not letting these players translate. All the Yankees are notorious for churning out quadruple A pitchers. Besides Severino, who hasn't been able to show oh. another full year, name me another pitcher that's come up through our organization that's made that jump that hasn't been a quadruple A player. Ivan Nova. He wasn't even that great. No, like, but that that's that's exactly what I'm proving. But Domingo Herman, so, but no, we traded for him. Yeah, but no, then he did come up in our system. But that that's just a guy. It, it comes to a point where you kind of also have to get lucky with the guy, like their stuff, like with the Rays and Snell, his arm angle and just the movement he gets on his pitches. That's just kind of weird. Glass now, everyone knew he had it. The Pirates just don't know how to work with pitchers. Blake's gonna help. Matt Blake's gonna help. But at the end of the day, when the pitchers are on the mound. It's not Matt Blake's fault. It's the pitchers themselves. Yeah. Ching Ming Wong was not, um, he didn't come up. He kind of did, but he was already polished. Well, he was from Japan, no? He was from um, Taiwan. Oh. Um, but, yeah, he kind of came up, but he was more like, I would say like, I'm talking about like a guy you draft or you sign as like a kid. Honestly, I can't. Michael Panetta. It's, it's, <laughs> no, <we're laughs> um, Bro, Bobbio might be my new favorite person. I mean, he's not even on our team. No, he will be. He will be. Like, you know, <laughs> listen, if Brett Gardner, I've said this so many times, if Brett Gardner signs for more than $8 million, I'm jumping out my window. Please film it. 
bro, like I'll live. do it all on live. I'll Bad. angle my camera and I'll literally jump out the window because that would just be ludicrous. I'll I'll be waving the bandanas and the flags and the words of Brian De Janeiro. We haven't seen Brian in a while, actually. Yeah, he might be dead. R.I.P. Brian. Hashtag R.I.P. Brian. You know, especially the last guy we got was Pettit. I was trying to think of anyone before Pettit. I mean, you could say Phil Hughes. No way. Wait, Pettit is the last. I would say Jabba. Jabba and Phil Hughes. Batances? They were decent. Batances. He was a star. He was a failed starter. That's true. But I mean, he's still a well-developed pitcher. I mean, when you have he failed it as, as a starter, but he became. I'm talking about starters because both like ev- like it's it's hard to develop these starters. I mean, but that's why the Yankees they have the luxury of um getting international signings. Um, <laughs> all right, I, I let me just backtrack a little bit because after Nick's comment, I'm a little bit concerned. Um, I just want to make it clear, I'm not trying to form like a suicide cult here. Like that's not what my intention. That's your 16 cult. So, Nick, please don't... narrated by Brian De Janeiro. <laughs> please don't jump out your window, Nick. I'm I'm saying that right now, putting that on the record. But um, I agree with I agree with Ryan. Uh, Joe Musgrove, that's a name. That's a as name. I said, the bunch of the the and I will kind of come at you here. A bunch of you the guys that you will, yeah, a bunch of the guys that you consider to be bargain bins. There, those are the guys that you that have potential. Yes, they haven't tapped into it, but all it takes is a good pitching coach, and we have that luxury now. We have a young pitching coach that actually knows what he's doing that will be able. I mean, you can't uh, base. So uh, how is this a shot at me? Because you you say you hate the Yankees going after the bargain bin. No, not no. It but this is a different situation. Okay, okay. I don't think Joe Musgrove is the bargain bin. Okay, I think what, what, like what, what starter would you consider the bargain bin? The bargain bin. I would assume a guy like Marco Gonzalez. Oh yeah, no, he fucking sucks. Yeah, yeah he fucking or, sucks. or like uh, like uh, I wouldn't say Garrett Richards, but I, he's a, I he, has, he has potential. He has potential. Like I don't even know if he's still in the league anymore, but this name just pops in my mind. Like Trevor Cahill. Yeah, I, that's I like can bargain that. bin. Okay, cool. We're on the yeah, same. Page. Okay. Yeah, no, I got it. Um, <laughs> the Yankees. They just need to start developing pitchers at the end of the day because that is that is what is preventing us from making it. Yeah, you look back at the 2009 World Series. We bought those pitchers besides Pettit, and we had CeCe. We had Burnett. We also had a really like kind of diverse bullpen. You had, of course, yeah. you had Mo, but then you had... Um, Damaso Marte. The GOAT. The, that guy's <laughs> only job was to get out the lefties. I mean, we also had Octavio Dotel at the time. I mean, we had, we oh, had yeah, names. Mike Fires. Mike Fires. I would consider him bar- bargain bin. He, yeah, um, he's also, uh, I think George likes Marco Gonzalez. For he, me, I view him Marco as like Gonzalez a Jay Happ. He, yeah, he even throws slower than Jay Happ. And he's like, he can get absolutely, uh, he will get absolutely murdered in our, uh, he's the type of guy where if he's not on his A plus command, he's done. Like he will get he shelled. Would, he's the type of guy who would be in the suicide cult. Yeah, he's one thousand percent. I mean, so, I mean, like, I don't know if I want to say this. I maybe I'll just go on the record and saying this. Now, the more that I think about it, I wouldn't be completely opposed to Taiwan Walker. Taiwan Walker has good stuff. He just hasn't found a home where they're no, able to really tap into this. But also, I'm going to say something here: the Yankees need to stop focusing on a dominant bullpen. Of course, you want to have a good bullpen, but they need to stop putting all the focus in. Like, we need to stop thinking we can have five guys, six guys in our bullpen. Because at the end of the day, the bullpen is not going to... One second. Um, The bullpen is not going to save us at the end of the day. We need those starters because we're going to tax out the bullpen. Well, it's kind of weird because the Yankees always seem to like want to follow suit from another team. It's like... They got the whole bullpen idea from the Royals. Twenty, what was it? Twenty, yeah, it's twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen. They wanted a bullpen like the Royals because they saw that that wins games in the postseason, right? And now, looking at the Yankees, now it looks like now they're trying to steal Tampa Bay's idea of using the opener and trying to get pretty with your bullpen, and seeing what they did in look, game two. But look what happened! Didn't win them. Didn't win them a World Series. At nope. the end of the day, what what did what did what won the Dodgers the World Series? A dominant rotation with two starters that you can bring out of the bullpen. No, exactly, and that's why I think the Yankees' whole mentality is messed up. Because look at how the Royals won the World Series in 2015. Yes, they had a really good bullpen, 
But they had clutch, clutch, clutch ass hitting. They had such a versatile lineup, and they put the ball in play, and they capitalized on the other team's mistakes. That's exactly. They what also they made did. the best trade of the offseason, which was getting Johnny Cueto. Yes, without Johnny Cueto, they don't win the World Series. So yes, the Yankees might want to get pretty and copy what all these small market teams are doing. But I think there comes a time and place where they need to evolve and take on their own strategy, which is what they're not doing. They're not coming up with their own strategy. It seems like they're picking parts, a little, a little bit of the Royals, a little bit of the A's, a little bit of the Rays. You're the New York Yankees. Like, when did they forget this? I mean, but look, look having the Yankees have always had a good bullpen. Like all the years that they've won. 2009, they had a good bullpen. I wouldn't say we're taking those ideas. I think with the bullpenning stuff, yes, but, um, but they need to just the Ray. The Rays started bullpenning. I mean, the Royals yeah, kind no, of like set the base, and then the Rays well, no, ran. When the when the Royals the Royals just had a good bullpen. They still had their starters going in. The Rays yeah. had to bullpen the game because the Rays didn't have enough starters. Yeah, it's I, I'm talking about the Yankees are too focused on like building that bullpen to make up for the lackluster rotation. But at the end of the day, you but can't have not Yeah. Well, well at the time when we had, yes, Britton, Ottavino, Canely, uh, Chapman, like that was really good. Yeah. Bro, but I would much, but I would much, I would much rather have the Yankees have a starter go six, seven innings, five, six, seven innings. Then we're all the ball because in the playoffs, you want your starters to go deep in the game. So then you don't have to overtax that bullpen. I don't want to have to keep bringing out these guys left and right, left and right. No, like, because it, it doesn't because work then, in a playoff scenario. Because then you're just banking on that pit, each pitcher having it. Like, yes, you can assume that Britton, Green, and Chapman are all going to have it on that on most days. But then you then it comes down to the part where you're hoping that Loisaga is going to have it. And he's 50-50 all the time. Yeah, no, but that's exactly the thing. It's like that's why I'm not a fan of the bullpenning format in the postseason. We saw it collapse on the Yankees in 2019 against the Houston Astros. Having one of your top tier relievers facing the same team five times in the span of eight days, it's stupid. I don't know how the hell analytics don't take this into account. If Carlos Correa sees Zach Britton, let's say five at bats. In a series, that's more than enough for this dude to get locked in. He might not even see Zach Britton five times in five years. Am I right? Yeah, I, I would say with Britton, it's different because it's very hard. No, to no, I'm just using Britton as an example. Yeah. I'm I think the best like example. Like Green. I say the best example is Ottavino in so, that 2019 uh, ALCS. The first game one, he throws a first pitch slider to Springer, just misses it. The next day, first pitch slider to Springer, he doesn't miss it. It's it's stuff like that. You're relying so much on matchups, but then, I mean, think about back to 2017, Game Six. Why did you take Sevy out when he was cruising? Yeah, that, I think that also was probably Girardi's last last moment. Like, even though he said he was, they they said he was hurt. Sevy was fine, and he was cruising. Um, I wouldn't even say this is like bullpenning. Like, like I'm just talking about like. They're too heavy on the bullpen and they're forgetting about that rotation because we need this year our starters to develop because let's say we have another playoff exit we, by 2022, I'd hopefully 2021. By 2022, we need to have Devi and Clark Schmidt fully developed because then your rotation is – that's like I say, when I say they'll be developed. I think Devi's going to be – I think Devi will find himself early to mid-2021. Clark, it all depends on when he comes up. See, I think Devi's going to get shelled this year. I don't know if that's just like the the pessimist in me thinking, yeah, but I think there's going to be a lot of adjusting. A lot well, of adjusting. He had to do adjusting in, in summer camp as well after the Philly shelled him. No, I mean, Devi, opponents are going to be adjusting to yeah, him. But at the, yeah, with, with uh, Devi, what he has on his side is a, a high spin rate fastball, a wipeout curve, a good slider, and that changeup is going to be the defining pitch for him. If he can continue to develop that, which he's done, he's going to really be a good like two three pitcher. Um, Clark Schmidt has the stuff to be like a ground ball kind of guy. Um, what do you think about this? Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'll give like my in depth analysis about that. Listen, it would be nice to win a World Series, but in the words of Rob Manfred, it's just a piece of metal. 
Like, right? It's just a piece of metal. That's all that matters. But listen, if the Yankees win the World Series, I think we should throw a parade on our own. Um. So George said that uh, the Yank. If anyone sees, you're just Chapman, gonna ignore my parade yeah. comment. Well, we will, of course we're all gonna right. have a parade. No, no, I want to have a parade. Who's like, inv- are we trying to get the float? Parry gets oh. his own float. The dead flying ants get their own float. Yeah, rip um, those. Um, did you yeah, want some other so, comment? Yeah, I mean, me with Chapman is people forget. The, I don't hate the, Chapman. The, the Brusso thing. That was just Mike Brusso fouling off those tough pitches. At the end of the day, um, uh, before before you go on, I don't care if this is a a really hot bad take. Mike Brusso is a legend. Oh yeah, that that, that honestly like, that was that was perfect. I re- I respect the fuck out of Mike yeah. Brusso. Like Yankee fans could hate him all you want, but the dude's solid. Yeah, that, no problems with that. But people forget, like with Chapman in his slider, and now if he can develop that splitter. Chapman's untouchable. And yes, oh, yeah. Chapman Chapman this season, I wouldn't really consider him back because we all know this. Chapman takes about a month to get into the swing of things. And by the time he got back mid-August, late August, a month later, we're in the playoffs. Yeah. Not, a bunch of our pitchers did not have time to come into their own except Garrett Cole. He came into his own. Yeah. Um, But Chapman, Britton, Green, Ottavino, I think is going to have a bounce back year. Um, I think what Dude. really hurt Ottavino this year was honestly the Astros because the Astros prevented the Yan- prevented all teams from being able to get like at like after like an at bat you could go into the dugout or the uh, little tunnel and, and look at on the previous at bat the Astros ruined that so no one could do that that honestly the, the person that that hurt the most was JD Martinez because he couldn't review his yeah. at bats after the game he was he the king make- of that mm-hmm. it was the and that that stuff is legal but the Astros going on and fucking everything up. But that's besides the point. Yeah, as as um that the other guy said, Chapman also had COVID. So I know, but so did DJ. But Chapman, I think, had symptoms. I don't who, think who so. Knows? Didn't they say he was like lifting like five hundred pounds? Yeah, he, 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 he was he was sweating it all out. He was chilling. But um, I I also have to agree with Ryan on this. Like a lot of people blame the Yankees season ending again on Chapman. Like you can't keep putting Chapman in these season ending situations 100%. like this, especially when your team scores one run, one run off of Tyler Glass now, who was on two days rest, Brandon, Brandon Kramer, two days rest. And you could see that some of his pitches had the potential to be hit out. We were just been rocked. And, and Nick Anderson didn't have his best stuff. I mean, oh my god, that game still haunts me. Honestly, it's not even on Boone. It's not even on Boone. It's on the team. It's on the hitters. I okay, but Boone did make some bonehead decisions in game five. Well, I mean, bringing in Chapman in the seventh inning was absolutely idiotic. Yeah, I think at that time, I the only way and I can see it, bro, bringing in Mike Ford to pinch hit that was the worst thing I've ever seen. What was that? He was literally just looking for a solo home run, like out and, of nowhere. You want to know the funny thing is Ford had one pitch to get and he just missed. I know. It. No, I know. And, and that's because he hadn't had an at bat in like a month and a half. It was really bad. It was really bad. Think- and then the fact that knowing, knowing you bring in Ford to pinch hit that leaves you with Gary Sanchez behind the plate for the rest of the game. That's that. That's an awful decision. And in in, even if, even if Ford hits a single there, you still have to bring in Gary to catch. Right. Except then you have to waste Wade too, because then you got to pinch run forward. Yeah, I mean, looking back, it wasn't the best, but at the end I of the day, the, even the, the main, best stuff. The, the at the end of the day, you need to score more than one fucking run. That was brutal. Oh my, bro, do you remember our? I think you were the only one that came on the game five post game stream. Bro, we talked. For it was two literal hours. depression. We talked for two hours. We did right. I think I'm going to make a, a kind of like a unpopular opinion. Oh God. I think in 2019 Boone got better at, at managing in a way in terms of in his 2019. bullpen 2019. Yeah. In yeah. 2020, just like everyone, he kind of took a step back five. Steps I think, back. Yeah. But I think next year is going to be a big test. I'm not going to fully give up if he can fix his shit. Um, I just think with the with the short season and everything, and I'm n- in no way making any excuse for Boone because of how the way he managed the playoffs. Because the the calls that he made were terrible. But 
just if he he took five steps back, just if, if he takes more steps back, then we're fucked. But like <clears throat> all, all we're asking Boone to do is not that difficult. The lineup does most most of the work. If we could just like don't honestly for the team, just don't make him have to think. Yeah, like no, I agree. if it's a close game, set it up perfectly. Don't make it hard where we're scoring one run and we've already started using people because then he starts saying, oh, fuck, fuck. It starts pressing all these buttons. Oh, cool. Let me yeah, bring in. Didn't we say this? I, we said this so many times throughout the season. It's like Aaron Boone looks like a good manager when the Yankees scored 35 runs because he doesn't have the ability to put his team in a position to lose. Aaron Boone in close games is probably the most stressful thing I've ever seen in my life. The dude just doesn't know how to handle close games. I think I, I think that's a very fair statement. It just seems like anytime he's put in a position where the Yankees are down by one or up by one, it's like he just hits panic. And it's like he throws out like all these crazy ass decisions and just throws shit at the wall and sees what sticks. Yeah, I mean look at it like the 2019 playoffs. In in with Minnesota, he managed that quite well. There were some close where, games. 2019? I, 2019 against Minnesota. He managed game three quite well. I will say he managed game three. Well, yes, yes. Game. Yes. Game three was very well managed. Like th there are some times where he manages well, but then you're like, okay, let's just improve on that. Yes. And then he has an absolute fucking stinker the next day. Yeah, no, I right. agree. And I agree with you in the sense that 2018 was a rough year for Aaron Boone. 2019, he did improve. And then 2020 was worse than 2018. Yeah. I mean, that's why, like, of course, you're going to keep an eye on the season, but it's just good to see what he can do over a full season because no one managed like this before. So as what far grade as Boone, would you give his tenure? Every I year think, combined. I think a fair grade would be a C, C plus. I was going to say C minus. Because... C minus. There are times, like, in the playoffs, some people will blame him for shit, but a lot of the times it's just, like, 2018, he was outmanaged, but we shouldn't have gone down. He yes, was outmanaged. <laughs> I mean, let's look at 2019. A lot of that he made some good moves when he needed to, but then a lot of the times the lineup just fails him. Like, we, you can't count on every single pitcher doing well if the lineup's not scoring runs in the playoffs. At the end of the day, it's everything as a whole. Um, but with Boone, I would give him a C C plus. Yeah, I would give him a C minus. I think I think we're in the same range there. Um, LA Yankee King has a choice of words. If the Dodgers get Bauer, um, I'm not watching baseball next season. Well, I do want to say one thing. For everyone saying it's over, two things. As Zach Britton said, when the Orioles faced off against the Detroit Tigers, who had four Cy Youngs on their team in their rotation, Scherzer, Verlander, Porcello, and Price, they swept them. I can't them. believe that team didn't win anything. The, the Orioles swept them. I know. And also, wait, wait, when that was 2014, right? Yeah, when and the that Astros was without got, Machado. That was also uh, when without was, that that was also when the uh, Tigers had JD Martinez, who was really starting to become yeah. an All Star, Prince Fielder, Miguel Cabrera, yeah, Johnny Peralta. I remember I th I was in shock that the Orioles swept the Tigers. I mean, but also everyone said the uh, Astros were going to win the World Series and everything when they when they got Grinky. Like, if they get Bauer, great. They still have to perform in the playoffs. Yeah, no, like, I agree. At, at the end of the day, the Dodgers don't get out of the NLCS if the uh, the Braves had one more good pitcher. Like, yeah. And as honestly, everyone, the only way I would be okay with letting Gigi LeMahieu walk is if you use the money that you don't sign him with to build around, get some starting pitching, get another bullpen arm. Yes, no, DJ LeMahieu, should, but like. For, for saying fuck DJ LeMahieu, like <laughs> you, you start saying that and then people will start to dig up all of your tweets and be like, this you like, like let, let's slow yeah. down. Listen, I know Ryan, I've seen some of your tweets uh, on Twitter and I know that sometimes you're saying DJ LeMahieu is overrated. I am going on the record right now and I'm saying DJ LeMahieu is underrated. 
Like I he's couldn't good. name. He's overrated. I name a handful of players. Overrated in what way? This guy is, in know, my I'm opinion, Yankee fans. Yankee fans over. I've seen Yankee fans say he's better than Mike Trout. I don't think he's better than Mike Trout. But bro, we're like. If there's a more valuable player in the American League this season, please let me know. Yeah, because I mean, if we're talking value, DJ LeMahieu is the most valuable player in Major League Baseball. Actually, maybe not Major League Baseball, but the American League in 2020. I think DJ LeMahieu is is I think it's like team by team basis. He's he's extremely like his value in the really American shows- League. Name another more valuable player than DJ Mike Trout. In 2020, Mike Trout, bro, what value did Trout to bring to the Angels last year? You put Trout on any, uh, you put Trout on the Yankees, and they I'm are talking making- value. What value did Trout have to the Angels, a, a team that did nothing? But there's no value. But I'm saying you put Trout on an on another team in yes, the American League, I'm and that saying- team. Yes, exactly. That's why Trout is the best player in baseball. Yeah. He's the best player. But I think that's where we switch up value and best. There's a big difference between the two. That's why I give DJ LeMahieu a lot of value. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think his value to the Yankees is more than his value to another team. <laughs> no, I agree. And that's why I really put him as the most valuable player. And I think people, like, everyone has different ideas as to what the most valuable player is. And a lot of people view it as the best player. That's why I, a lot of people make the argument. It should be Mike Trout every year. And I can't argue with that because it's really just perception. Also, like I'm going to try to see if I can word this where it makes sense with LeMayu. The Yankees have not had someone like him in a long time. He's exactly what we needed. So there are times where his value can seem that's where I'm saying. Yankee fans can overrate him. Where is this team without DJ LeMayu? That that I'm saying, I'm not saying, there, I would and say it's really one dimensional. But when you look at when you look at what other fans say about Lemayhu, he's underrated to appropriately rated. But then he's like, a Yank- god, <laughs> he's a god amongst men, bro. Like I, I don't want to get myself like misconstrued here. After 2019, I'm like, all right, let's see what DJ does in 2020. Let's see if 2019 was a fluke, right? This dude comes in in 2020 and does the same exact thing, if not better, but pe- with COVID. That's the thing. People do forget DJ's been doing this his entire career. No, I know, but at this level for such a big team. Yeah, I mean, but he's been he's been this type of hitter his entire career. He just needed the exposure because you're not going to get a lot of exposure in Colorado. Um, no, obviously not. Oh, but um, that's what I'm saying, bro. I need DJ to make you back on the Yankees. Yeah, and I, I do think, I think, at least from you, that you've gone to saying he's not coming back. I think the one... We, Wait, I, I, I said do, he's not coming back? No, I feel like there were times like the mood was like, nah, I don't know. I don't see it happening. No. I th- no. Pause. All right, pause. Because I've always said, I'm like, going into the offseason, I thought it was 100% certain that mm-hmm. DJ LeMay was re-signing with the Yankees, right? And all this other stuff is smoke and mirrors. But as the days go by, and every day that goes by where he's not a Yankee, I obviously lose hope a little bit. Like I, yeah. I don't think that I don't think I that's think, saying I don't think he's coming back. But obviously, each day that goes by, the likelihood goes down. Yeah, I think normally, me personally, I would start getting more nervous if it wasn't if there wasn't uncertainty about when the fuck the season's starting. Um, Which is weird. But, I don't know why there's uncertainty. Uh, they because the, as Manfred said, NBA they, just started. But also, do like the thing people were saying comparing the NBA to the MLB. The NBA before COVID shut everything down. They were almost done with their regular season, so they still got a lot of money. The MLB cannot afford. And I know millionaires, billionaires want more money, but I think the reason they'll wait till May is more vaccines to be administered, so then they can have some form of fans in the stadium. I it's know, just a bro, money grab. Fans are getting grab. the vaccine. You can't but force then, the fans to get the vaccine. That's not even then, realistic. But then you can. I don't know what the, what's going on there. Right they just want fans in the stadium. That's why I think they're going to delay the season. I know, but oh. here's my here's my thing. You want the players? Is that what they want? They want all the players to get vaccinated? No, they MLB wants fans in the stadiums, so they think okay. it'll be uh, like other the governors and everyone will be more open to fans once there are more vaccines. I don't know. All I know is I think it's <laughs> all due to fame. Okay, but here's my thing. Because I know we heard like a lot of reports like Ticketmaster was going to like require like a vaccine confirmation or like a test. 
I think that the Yankees, I mean, if we're talking like 25% capacity, right? They'll, I they'll, think, they'll do temperature checks before you go on the No, stadium. that's what I was going to say. It's either like I could see them doing temperature checks or maybe like rapid testing. I, I don't know how long that takes. I don't think they'll do rapid testing. I think um, what they'll end up doing is temperature checks and uh, you'll have to wear masks, which is fine. But also, and- also, bro, here's my thing. If you're scared of getting COVID... Like, don't go to the fucking game. Don't go to the game. <laughs> then the thing they're scared about, like people who don't care if they got if they have COVID. Okay, so everyone should sign a waiver. Everyone who goes to a game should sign a waiver. Everyone has to wear a mask. Be like, look, I understand if I go to this game and I get COVID, that's on me. It's not our major league baseball. It's not on the New York Yankees. Because I know personally, like, if you look at, I don't know, I, I went to the mall last week, right? The mall was packed. Like, we're talking, I don't even know, like, numbers like that, but maybe a 1,000 people. I don't know. You look at, like, Bryant Park tonight or, like, Rockefeller Center. I'm sure they say there's a shit ton of people, and that's yeah. an outdoor gathering. So I don't understand why the Yankees couldn't do 25% capacity. I don't know how many numbers that would be because you know I suck at math, but I could definitely um, I mean, see if, if the stadium can hold 50,000. So what's 25% of that? 10? A little bit over 15. I could Wait, see that. No, no, no. A little bit less than 15. How about I could see that. If I'm, if I'm gov, who does that come down to? Half, governor, mayor, governor. Okay. So Cuomo, he already said, right. That they're setting a plan for the bills to have fans. And yeah, I think, I think we're going to have half a uh, limited capacity when the season starts. And then I think we'll be able to see full capacity towards like say August, September, those months. Um, that's why with MLB, they'll probably wait till May to be able to. And then what do double headers or shorten the season? I mean, if you, if you mo- push it back to May, you can get 140, 144 games in easily. I think Number that one, should be this, the season length anyway, if we're being honest, like you can get 144 is a very good number. And also, I mean, I, I think I, I agree with you on that because if we look at the 2020 season, I think the season was originally going to start like March 26th. Like that's way too early for baseball to start. I'm sorry. If we're it talking like mid April, I, mean, I think that's a little bit more likely. Yeah. I mean, 144 games you can. Yeah. They had fans in Texas for, for the NLCS and the world series. Yeah. So you're yeah, telling me that that's not possible a year later. No, I think they're going to have, I say, I'm talking about the vaccine. They, they want to be able to get as much money as they possibly can. So if they can push it back till May and get maybe now 50, 50 to 75% fans, that's more money. No, the, I billionaire, the billionaires want more money. My my only thing is I could see them doing the temperature check slash testing thing yeah, totally more so than the vaccine, only because I think they would lose a lot of money because... I'm assuming the vaccine is going to be optional. Like I, I can't see. Okay, I'm not saying they're going to require vaccine. a vaccine. I just feel like people be like, okay, as the vaccine is more readily available, now you yeah. have people like now now that the power is in your hands. If you want to get vaccinated, you have extra protection and can do these other things. For the other people that don't have it, let's say let's say you have COVID, and I, I'm vaccinated. <laughs> this, this <laughs> me, bro. You have that extra. I wouldn't say you have full immunity, but you have the antibodies that help you fight it. So you sure. know the risks. So. But if you're someone else that doesn't have the let's say, let's say you're someone that's scared of COVID but do, doesn't want to get vaccinated, why the fuck are you going to a game in the first place? And then you're going to complain that you get it. It's it's yeah. it's the but way that, that's, that's why I just don't go to the game. Bro. Exactly. At the end of the know. day, I mean, but in the first week of the NFL, you saw some reports of uh, the fans getting COVID. Recently, I haven't seen much about that because I think no. people are like, all right, let's just get this done. Wear your fucking mask, social distance, and if you have the fucking virus, don't <laughs> fucking go to a, a game. Well, that's why I'm assuming if Ticketmaster has that thing where they like require like to show a positive test or something before you enter stadium. I don't care, bro. I I think the bottom I, line here is like I just want to go to a game next season. That's it, right? I think we will. I mean, if, if opening day, I got I, I'm, we go on opening day. I'll go whatever it is. Day. I'll bring I'll bring ten masks if that's what they need me to. do. I'll hand out unhinged masks well, in the car. Pat and I will literally wear hazmat suits. I. If that means I could go to opening day, I'd wear a hazmat suit. Bro, I literally told you I was taking your opening day. Yeah, no, I'll I'll, I'll wear a hazmat we suit. We will wear hazmat suits with the unhinged logo on it. I'm so down, bro. Shout out to Dugout Mugs as well. 
Oh yeah, Doug and Mugs. Um, before we wrap things up tonight, shout out Doug and Mugs. Dugoutmugs.com slash on hinge. Purchase your very own baseball bat, drinking mug, quality ass products. I mean, they even have shot glasses. I think I need to get a shot glass. For water, just to make sure for water, just water. Because, because for water only. That's all or apple drink. juice. Or apple juice. Honestly, I'm a I'm a big water guy. All I drink is water. I can, I haven't had soda in years, probably. Big water guy. Um, hashtag water in the chat. Um, let me just pop this comment up. Emiata hockey's the only one that didn't. Next year turns out a lot better. My ass is let's go. Let's go. Hashtag fuck COVID. <laughs> um, so that's gonna wrap things up for us tonight. Um, I think I'm gonna Jake go. Jake says he will wear a Chewbacca costume to the game. Fuck. <laughs> I can't believe we almost missed that. Jake, you wear that Chewbacca because I mean, honestly, that prevents you from getting COVID. Brian will wear a, the Princess a Leia outfit. costume. No, he will wear the Princess Leia outfit from Episode Six. If you don't know what I'm referencing, then I'm you Star Wars. Hashtag water, water water all right um we will see you guys next time i believe i'm gonna go live on uh on twitch tonight and maybe play some warzone did you watch me play warzone the other night it was content no, but I have warzone. maybe you could play um but you everyone go war. what everyone go war. everyone go follow twitch.tv slash on hinge new york i'll probably be live on there in like 15 minutes honestly so if you want to come hop on we could chat on there you know what game you should get that the stream will love? GTA 5. I think it's on sale. I, I got Red Dead Redemption. GTA, you on GTA will be extremely funny. Really? All right, maybe I'll get it. All right, cool. All right, so we will see you guys uh, next time. Maybe I'll see some of you in like 15 minutes. Have a great night, everyone. Stay safe and enjoy Brian's COVID PSA. Might be out for the year. He's having a good year. <laughs> Bless you. All right, cool. Let's do this.